Hi, my name is Dimitri and today we'll see how reports in Clockify work and how you can use them to analyze track time and performance. Let's get into it. The dashboard shows you a quick overview of all of your activities. You can see how much time you've tracked each day and where the time went based on project color. If you hover over a day, you can see more details. At the top, you can see the total track time, the most used project and the client. A total breakdown by project is shown here. And here on the side, you can see your top 10 activities. To see all activities ranked, click here and change to all. Here in the corner, we can see that we're looking at this week's data. We can switch to another week like this, or click here and choose another date range. The same can be shown from a billability point of view, if you click here and choose billability. Now you can see the percentage of tracked activities for that period, which are billable and non-billable. The top bar will now show the total track time, the percentage of track time that is billable, and the billable amount. This dashboard view only shows your hours. To see your team's hours as well, switch to team here. You'll see that the team dashboard has more hours, plus a new table below which lists all of your team members and shows you their activity. For example, you can see that Keith is currently working on this, and Alicia was working on this a while ago. You can see the exact start time by hovering the mouse here. Next to the latest activity is the total column, which shows you the total track time for the period and a visual breakdown of where the time went based on project colors. And when I hover and click, I can see more details. Because the table lists all your users, it can be quite useful to see which users have yet to submit their time in a certain period. You do that by looking at the total column. The column will show no activity next to users who haven't logged any hours. The table is sorted by latest activity, but you can also sort it alphabetically. Or by total time by clicking on the column name. If you use the activity table frequently, you can pin it so that it's always at the top whenever you open the dashboard. Team Dashboard also lets you switch to the billability view to see the percentage of billable and non-billable time. Now let's move on to reports. Clockify has three types of time reports. The summary report, which is for cost statistics and analysis, the detailed, which is for administration, and the weekly report, which is for timesheet breakdown. The summary report is the main report where you can analyze data. At the top, you can see the total amount of track time this week, recorded billable time, and billable amount. Besides the billable amount, you can also see costs and profit if you click here and mark both options. Here, you can see how much time was tracked each day and a summary table broken down by project below. The charts can be switched from project view to billability view, depending on whether you want to see a breakdown by projects each day or billability per day. You can also see a breakdown by other criteria by using filters in the table below. For example, you can group the report by user and project, and then the table will show you who tracked how much time on what project. If you have an estimate on projects, you can see them next to the time and amount for comparison. You can break down data even further by adding another subgroup, like date. Now you can expand a user, their projects, and see how much time they've tracked by day. If you wish to see data for the whole month or some other time range instead, you can choose it here. At the top of the report, you can see filters. These help you see only what you need. We'll cover filters further down the video, but in short, this is how they work. For example, if you want to only see time for a certain client, you can select it and click Filter. Now, only time for that client is shown. If you want to see rounded numbers, mark the rounding option here. From here, you can change the rounding settings to round up, down, or to the nearest value. Rounding doesn't make any permanent changes to data, so you can turn it off and get the real values back anytime. Once the report displays what you need, you can download it as a nicely formatted PDF or as raw Excel or CSV data. You can customize which columns you want to download and choose how to display the data by customizing the export here. You can also change the name, add a custom note, and a bunch of other options. If you want to add your company logo, you need to upload it as a workspace image in workspace settings. Alternatively, you can share a link to the live report by clicking on the share icon, giving it a name, and copying a public link that you can send to others. Or in the case of private reports, choose which people will be able to see it and then share it. You can also receive this report via email each day, week, or month by checking this box. To get a detailed overview of all of the track time, use the detailed report. It lists all of the entries of you and your team. 
Same as in the summary report, we can switch between periods, filter the data however you want, use rounding, and display billable amounts, costs, or profits. Despite this, the detailed report lets you correct entries by clicking on what you wish to edit, just like in the time tracker. For example, you can filter entries that don't have a project, and then categorize them properly before exporting the data. To edit multiple entries at once, you can select multiple or all entries you see, and choose in bulk edit mode what you want to change. Or you can use the audit feature to display entries without projects, tasks, or entries of suspicious duration, and then correct them before exporting. You can also add time for one or more people by clicking here. The detailed reports export function is also really useful, as it contains absolutely all data. Because it has everything, you can use it for personal backup or for pivot tables in Excel. And finally, there is the weekly report, which shows you the data in a weekly timesheet format. This way you can see a breakdown by project and user for each day of the week. And here you choose whether you wish to see track time or billable amounts, costs or profits. Weekly reports can also be filtered, customized, exported and shared with others. The weekly report also allows you to see who hasn't logged any time in a particular week by clicking here. By default, reports consider Monday to be the first day of the week. But you can change it here in the workspace settings to be Sunday, for example. And then your reports will go from Sunday to Saturday. You can also customize how the data is displayed in profile preferences. You can also indicate whether you want to use the 24-hour format or 12-hour AM-PM format. And in the workspace settings, you can control the duration format and choose whether you want to see seconds or not. If you turn seconds off, know that all of your entries will be rounded up to the minute. Workspace settings also allow you to control time rounding. Here you can set rounding options and specify if you wish to round up, down, or to the nearest 15 minutes or some other time interval. Then when you open a report, you can turn on rounding and all individual entries will be rounded accordingly. Now let's see how you can use filters to control what data is shown. At the top of each report are filters. You can, for example, open the team filter, select a user, click filter, and the report will show you only the time for that person. Or you can select a client and see the breakdown of only their projects. If you want to break it down even further, select a client and then select a specific project. Projects are grouped by clients, but if you don't want to organize your projects by clients, you can change that in the workspace settings to something else like project type. Then instead of filtering by client, you filter by type. If you want to find entries by some keyword in the description, you can type it here. This can be useful if your entries have a specific prefix or suffix. For example, if you track time on tasks that have some sort of ID, you can enter it here to see who worked on that task, how much, and when. You can also filter by billability, and you can filter by tags. Because tags work across the whole workspace, they're really useful for indicating status. For example, you can use tags to mark time as paid, invoiced, overtime, or anything else you need. Then you can filter by tags using contain logic, or switch to the doesn't contain. For example, if you mark the time you've invoiced as billed, you can run a report for doesn't contain the billed tag to see what you need to invoice. You'll also notice that most filters have the show active option. That's used when you want to specifically filter by something that's been archived. If you have an archived project that you'd like to filter, you first have to make the filter show archived projects. If you use custom fields, you can choose to display filters for them in the dropdown here and then use them. If you're in the summary report and wish to see all of the time for some group in more detail, you can click on the item in the table and you'll get a detailed report for just that item. Active filters are transferred between reports, so you can easily switch between reports and get the data you want to see. Or if you want different data in different reports, make sure to select the adequate filters again. Now let's see the other types of reports that you can use to analyze your work. To get to the attendance report, switch to the team report in the reports label. Now you'll get an overview of team activity by day. You can choose the time period you want to analyze data for. For example, choose today. The report will list the start and end work times for each team member, their total break and work hours, their daily work capacity, overtime hours, and time off taking during the day. If you see an exclamation mark in the work column and hover over it, 
it'll show you the difference between how much time a person tracked and their working capacity. Besides time period, you can also use filtering to show data for only some people. Or you can show data only for people who have overtime hours by filtering who logged more than eight hours a day, for example. Every filter in the attendance report gives you the option to enter exact values by logic smaller than, larger than, or exactly. So you can get specific information and then export it as CSV or Excel. The assignment report shows you the comparison between scheduled and actual track time, highlighting any differences between the two. You can also use filters here to display information for some clients, for example. You can further group the view in the table by team or projects and even add another category, like tasks. So now you can see progress on specific projects for each person and a task specifically. This report also allows you to see users without any time, so you can make adjustments to the schedules. This report can also be exported in CSV or Excel format. And finally, the expense report shows you an overview of expenses recorded for a specific period of time. At the top, you'll see the total amount of recorded expenses, and next to it, the amount that is billable. You can use filtering to display expenses for certain clients, for example, or expenses that are billable in case that you keep an internal log. You can customize the data you want to be exported. Choose how the data will be displayed, and finally, export the report in PDF, Excel, or CSV for even further analysis. That's pretty much all you need to know about analyzing reports in Clockify. To learn more about managing and sharing reports, be sure to watch our other tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.